the hunt in the dark alley. I should have never taken that shortcut. It was a spring night, and I was walking home from my boyfriend's house. It was almost midnight, my house was only a few blocks away, but I decided to go through the narrow alley to get home faster after I was feeling tired. I knew that taking the alley would cut my journey time in half, but I had always avoided it in the past. There was something about the dark, narrow alley that made me uneasy. As I entered the alley, the sounds of the city faded away. The only thing I could hear was the sound of my own footsteps echoing off the brick walls. The air was thick and humid, and I could feel beads of sweat forming on my forehead. I tried to pick up my pace, but my feet felt heavy, as though I was walking through quicksand. That's when I heard it, a faint rustling sound coming from somewhere behind me. I turned around, but there was nothing there. Just the same dimly lit alleyway with no signs of life. I brushed it off as my imagination and kept walking. I tried to calm down, saying to myself, Come on, Emma. Keep walking. It's, it's all in your head. But the rustling sound grew louder, more persistent. It sounded like someone was following me. I quickened my pace, but the sound only grew louder still. Suddenly, I felt something brush against my leg. I looked down, and my heart skipped a beat. A rat had scurried up my pant leg, and was now clinging to my thigh. I tried to shake it off, but it refused to let go. It sunk its teeth into my flesh, and I screamed out in pain. As I stumbled backwards, I caught a glimpse of something in the darkness. It was a figure, tall and strange. It stepped out of the shadows and into the dim light. It, it was a man, with wild eyes and a twisted grin. Was he the source of the rustling sounds? Had he been following me all along? I wondered. I turned and ran, the rat still clinging to my leg. But the man pursued me, his laughter ringing in my ears. I could feel his breath on the back of my neck as I sprinted toward the end of the alley. I made it out of the alley, bursting into the street, and was greeted with the harsh glare of the streetlights. No one was around, and the silence surrounded me, as if the world had paused. It was so quiet I could hear the sound of my heart beating out of my chest. I turned around and saw the man following me, as his footsteps grew faster and faster, making me feel like he was right on my heels. I continued to run. I could hear the sound of faint music in the distance, becoming louder and louder as I ran in that direction. I ran toward the music and finally came across a car that looked like it had two teenage girls in it. I bolted toward it, screaming, HELP! HELP! The driver looked at me with terror in her eyes. She not only saw me, but also a man chasing me. She then turned on her high beam headlights and drove toward me. As she did so, she opened the passenger car door. As I got closer to the car, I turned around to look at my pursuer and he was gone, as if he had vanished into thin air. The only evidence that he was ever there were the echoes of his footsteps, which slowly faded away into the night. I collapsed into the car, panting heavily as the adrenaline began to wear off. The two girls, who had saved me, were trying to comfort me as I trembled with fear. They called the police and helped me give a statement about what had happened. The police arrived within minutes and investigated the area, but they never found the man who had chased me. They did, however, find evidence that someone had been living in the alleyway, with makeshift shelters and discarded food wrappers. They warned me to be more careful in the future and never take shortcuts in an isolated area at night. As I sat in the back of the police car while they drove me home, I felt a mix of relief and fear. I thought back to that dark, narrow alley. I knew that I would never forget the fear that I felt that night, the fear that had almost cost me my life.